this work we do here at uh, the United West, this counterterrorism educational work, this work uh, chasing the Muslim Brotherhood around the United States, exposing and disrupting, disable, destroying their uh, operational activities. This work we do, analyzing the threat of uh, Islam worldwide, uh, commenting on the jihad worldwide, taking a look at the battlefields across the globe and even on the homeland. This work we do on occasion becomes depersonalized. It's almost as if uh, it's, it's mathematics. Some numbers are good and some numbers are bad. And uh, you hope you have enough numbers at the end that uh, equal good. But every once in a while, an event like uh, the event that occurred yesterday in Woolwich, London, southern part of London, the event that occurred there, that virtually everyone in the world has heard about, because of its horrible, its egregious, its horrendous nature and its audacious presentation by the killers, by the jihadis, to the world. Everyone has heard about this or seen it in less than 24 hours. And in one sense, the jihadi who uh, had the butcher knife and the blade in his hands uh, with blood all over his hands. Uh, he's become a uh, cause celeb, certainly to the Islamic jihadi world, without question. And if you've seen that video, we're going to show it to you in a couple of minutes. Uh, our show today is on this, this issue. If you've seen that video after the bad guy speaks to the cameraman, he walks across the street and there's a body, the body of the victim, uh, laying in the street. And as horrible and uh, gut-wrenching as that body laying there was, still very depersonalized. We, it's just, just something laying in the ground. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, Islamic Jihad, the system of Islam, the destructive system of Islam, and, and London, all of England, the United Kingdom, you guys are going to have to wake up to this. Your, 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 your head is in the sand on the danger that Islam poses to your country. Well, just take a look at Lee Rigby, will you? 25 years old. Lee Rigby is not a member of uh, SEAL Team 6. Lee Rigby is not a member of... Um, the British MI5. Uh, Lee Rigby is not a member of the SAS. Uh, we're getting Lee Rigby up there. Lee Rigby is um, a 25 year old kid. His dream, his dream since he was a little child was to be in the British Army. And he joined the British Army and um, Guess what, uh, what job he took in the army? His job is to play the drums, okay? He plays in the army band, the British Army Band. That's his job. Very lethal, you know, deadly job, playing in the band, cheering people up. Uh, he, left, he left the base yesterday in the afternoon, going home to his two-year-old son, Jack, and uh, to his neighbors. And he had um, a shirt on that, uh, that was a, a shirt honoring those British soldiers who have been wounded in battle. And the two jihadis, the two Muslim jihadis, were simply sitting in their car, saw him walk away, and uh, ran him down with their car. And when they got out of the car, and he was crunched under the car, they dragged him out, dragged him to the center, 25-year-old, put his picture back up for a second. But people have to see that Islamic Jihad kills innocent human beings. Um, 
drag this gentleman right here, 25-year-old kid, a drummer in the British Army. Drag him into the middle of the street. Take out, um, take out feudal weapons, weapons from medieval times, uh, hatchets and, and knives, and start hacking away. And reports were disemboweling him and, and hacking off his head. And then with blood on their hands and, and a smile on their face, they, they stand, and as the traffic stopped, they invited people to take pictures as they yell, Alu Akbar. Uh, Lee Rigby went to work that day, was coming home to see his son Jack, and uh, had no idea that he'd be a victim of this, uh, this deadly, deadly system called Islam. Well, if, you know, if it affects us here at the United West Trento Vision on this 23rd day of May 2013, if, if seeing that young kid, he's a boy, he's a little boy, if seeing that picture of this senseless, brutal murder affects us the way it does, then all of you folks in, in England truly, truly need to understand what's going on. And Mr. Cameron, for you to say this has nothing to do with Islam, and we will get into that in a moment, you're, you're misleading and improperly leading your people. This has everything, everything, at least according to Islamic doctrine and to the Islamic jihadis. You may get the spin artists and the apologists for Islam who want to tickle your ears about the threat doctrine of Islam, but your job, the reason you got elected, and the high calling you have, Mr. Cameron, is to see through the spin and the tickling of your ears and to understand Islam is at war with the UK. You had 600,000 people, white people, British, leave London over the past decade. And guess who filled that vacuum? You have an uncontrollable number of Somalis and Nigerians, Islamic jihadis, that are on the dole. You look, let's try to figure out what you guys can do. We know what we need to do here in the United States. And keep at the center of whatever you do, this young guy, Lee Rigby, and his two-year-old fatherless son, his orphan son now, Jack.